much my dear students in this session we are going to study the syntax and semantics and the first unit so moving on to the syntax the form or the structure of expression or the statement and program units here we need to understand the syntax as how we are writing the statements or the expressions in a program or the instructions in a program that means we can call them as program units so the structure of them is called the syntax next one is semantic the meaning of the written expression and the statements or the program units that means which are following the syntax are called the semantics syntax and semantics provides language definition so each language is having a syntax to write the instructions in that language and after writing the statements by using by with the help of the syntax and it should have the meaning and and it pro it produce some answer to the given instruction next one is the user of the language definition who are the users of the language definitions other language designers that means with the help of a particular language a new language can be defined implementers that means the users and well as the programmers that means the users of the language are called the programmers that means the user will use the language to write a program the general problem of describing the syntax terminology is the a sentence is a string of characters or some alphabets that is the first one that means what are the general problem of describing the syntax generally a syntax must follow the instruction with the flow of string of characters and with the help of alphabets and a language is a set of sentences that means language is called a collection or group of sentences and the third one is a lexeme is the lowest level of syntactic unit in a language and here you can see after that here you can see some words that is sum and begin a token is the category of lexeme called identifier and what is the formal definition of language recognizers a recognition device reads input string of the language that means it reads the given input string from the language and decides whether the input string belongs to the language or not that means that the programmer will write an instruction or expression with the help of language by following the syntax then the statement or the expression written by the programmer is that means the language used on that instruction is belongs to the language or not that means it has to be verified for example syntax analysis is a part of compiler that means what we studied in the introduction part syntax analysis that means there the same work is done that means analyzing whether the language or the sentences that are used in the instruction belongs to the language or not next one is generators a device that generates the sentence of language next one one can determine if the syntax of a particular sentence is correct by comparing it to the structure of generator and formal methods of describing the syntax how we can describe that means the language can describe the syntax for that a method is there with the help of a normal form that is bacchus nor normal form that is context free grammar it contains it gives the context free grammar mostly widely known for describing the programming language syntax with the help of extended bnf that means this bacchus nor form is called in the shortcut as bnf next one is what is bnf bnf is the formal mathematical way of describing a language that means while designing a language it defines a formal method of describing a language to describe the syntax of programming languages how the programming languages can write the can give uh, support to write the instructions of language the bacchus nor normal form is the way of define the syntax it consists what it consists at a set of terminal symbols and a set of non terminal symbols and a set of production rules where the production rule is left hand side is equal to the right hand side where lhs is the non terminal symbols and rhs is the 
sequence of symbols. Next one is BNF and context-free grammars. Here, context-free grammars are developed by Noam Chomsky in the mid of 1950s with the help of language generators. They are mean to describe the syntax of nat natural language. The generators are helpful to describe or to define the syntax of natural language. Next one is define a class of language called context-free language. With the help of context-free grammar, we are defining a language which is called context-free language. And BNF, about BNF, invented by John Bacchus to describe the Algol 58, that means the language. BNF is equivalent, equivalent to the context-free grammar. Next one is BNF is a meta language, that means meta means about something. Here meta language means which defines about another language, describes another language. In BNF, abstractions are used to represent classes of syntactic structures. They act like the syntactic variables also called non-terminal symbols. Here you can see the fundamentals of BNF. Non-terminals. Among them, the first one is non-terminal. BNF abstraction terminals, lexemes and tokens. Grammar is collection of rules, where the grammar is nothing but collection of rules. Here we are going to see a small example about all these, that means non-terminals, terminals and abstraction symbols and grammar. Examples of BNF rules, here you can see identifier list, most, uh, that means implies to the identifier and identifiers. And identifier list if statement, that means if statement is implemented, then it, it shows about the implement, if statement, that means if logic, then the statement. Generally, we know that if statement is given as if the logic, that means the condition or the logic we, that we want to check, then if it is satisfied, the statement is given. Next one, <clears throat> BNF rule. A rule has the left hand side and right hand side and consists of, that means what the rule consists of. Rule is implemented both on the LHS and RHS. While coming to the LHS and RHS, what it contains? It contains the terminals and non-terminal symbols. A grammar is the finite non-empty set of rules. That means, as I told you, grammar is nothing but set of rules. So, a grammar is a finite non-empty set of rules. That means, non-empty means number of rules has to be defined. Without rule, uh, there is no grammar. That's why it is called non-empty set. An abstraction is or non-terminal symbol can have more than one RHS. That means more than one right hand side statements, there must be possibility. Next one, here you can see statement is single statement that begins with statement list and end. Next one, how we can describe the list? Syntactic lists are described using the recursion. Recursion means implementation itself. Identifier list as identifier 1, identifier 2 and closing of identifier list. A derivation is repeated application of rules starting with the start symbol and ending with the sentence and we can understand this very easily by studying an example grammar which follows some rules as RHS and LHS. Here program statements, in the statements there are two statements are given among the statements statement and variable which is equal to the expression where here you can see what are the variables are a b c d and expression goes as term plus term whereas term minus term where term can be given as variable or constant variable and constant here again we are going to convert the given rules into the with the help of variables as like this you can see program is implies to the statements implies to the one statement here variable is uh, variable can be given as expression here a is one variable and a can be given as term plus term here one term can be treated as variable another term is given and that means another can term can be taken as a constant here there are four variables are de defined in the 
grammar that means a b c d now we are considering two where a is equal to b plus term where term can be taken as a constant that means a is equal to b plus constant constant we cannot define a here that means constant can be anything among the numerical symbols next one is derivation how we can derive the grammar every string of symbol in the derivation is a sentential form that means the symbol which is defined there in the derivation must be of sentence form and the sentence is sentential form that has only terminal symbols that means the symbols that are there only are terminal symbols here the leftmost derivation is one which in is one which the leftmost leftmost non terminal non terminal in each sentential form is the one that is expanded that means what we are saying is the leftmost symbols that are there in the derivation are in the expanded form the derivation may be neither leftmost nor or rightmost so this is about the syntax and semantics and how the bnf is used to define the syntax of a language thank you so much students we will continue in the next session